guys. Thank you so much for coming to your weekly love reading. This love reading should resonate for sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Those of you that are cross-watching, welcome, welcome. This can either be your situation or your partner's. It kind of just depends on who's watching. Sometimes if there's a lot of cross-watchers, the energy is reversed or flipped. Um, with that being said, if you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to receive alerts for when I post my readings. Also, too, please feel free to comment. I love reading what you have to write and um, really interacting with you guys on a more personal basis because I feel like we're kind of building like a little fam bam. And uh, with that being said, Aries, let's go ahead and hop into your reading. Damn. The Empress is flying out. Leo Taurus. Obviously, big shit is popping. Um, this week, I feel like, oddly enough, before I start the reading, I do want to say this. I think right now for Aries, because this is kind of the info that I'm getting, right now you guys are going through a change. It's like, I think prior to this, you were scared about the next 40 steps that it would take, where right now it's really about focusing on, you know, one by one and what it is uh, that you need for your next action. It's also about, you know, you saying like, if you want love, right? It's like, show me the first step and then everything else will follow, right? Because you can take that, that's who you are. And I think by creating that level of change and making that first step, there's definitely something that comes with it. And there's definitely a level of enjoyment that comes into your life that is making all of, you know, your endless hard work, your endless hours, it's inviting love to take over. And by that, it's like, here comes the enjoyment. And it also allows you to enjoy life, right? Life isn't just about all work and no play. It's also about playing and kind of, you know, having those additional aspects to life. So I just wanted to throw that out there before I start the reading. And I was very compelled to tell you that, all right? Okay. Who's Aries person of interest romantically? And you know I fucking love you, Aries, okay? Like, I love the feisty shit. I love the fact that you're ready to fight at all times. I love that you're ready to pop off. Like, I'm here for it. I'm the friend that's in the corner that's like, yes, get him. But then I'm also like, wait a minute, bitch. Let's, hold on. We got to remap this, okay? Before we go, you know, totally AWOL, let's figure out what the hell's going on. So um, I just want to tell you guys, like, I really do enjoy the level of fuckery that comes with Aries. And I'm just highly entertained at all times. And shout out to one of the best fucking Aries I know, okay, Twee. She's fucking amazing. She's bomb.com. Um, she's a hottie with a body, and she's just the shit. So um, shout out to the Aries uh, queen herself. All right, the emperor. She actually is the emperor. She really is. She does have that big dick energy. Okay, rant over. Um, let's go ahead and hop into it. All right. Um, who is Aries' person of interest? Who is their person of interest romantically? Aries, okay. One more time. I didn't know if that came up reverse. Who is Aries' person of interest romantically? Okay, all gifted. Oh, shit. I just got stuck in between my thighs. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's like the, you know, grip of life. Okay, all gifted. That's dope. So this is a very, very beautiful card, and we'll get more into this. Um, how does Aries feel about this person romantically? The Queen of Pentacles. Ew. Hey, Aries. Yes. Uh, that's Capricorn or Cancer. Cancer can be secondary. So Cancer Moon, Cancer Rising, Cancer Venus. This also can represent um, Virgo or Taurus. However, the Queens are always cardinal signs for me. So that's why I read it more so as Capricorn. Um, what is the current issue or situation between these two romantically? Okay, the Seven of Wands. That is uh, Mars and Leo. What is the current block or external influence here? Block or external influence. Sorry, somebody wanted to come in and then they're like, oh, hell no, let me get out. Um, it is the hangman. So that can be a Pisces or an Aquarius or obviously something that needs to be sacrificed in order to further the relationship. Um, and what is the best potential outcome here for Aries and their person of interest? Okay. One more time. I don't know if that was upright or not. Sorry. Best potential outcome here for Aries and their person of interest romantically, 23rd through the 29th. Aries. Woo! Okay. 
King of Cups, you know, Leo or Sa or Scorpio, that's a very, 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 very good energy, okay? I just want to go ahead and throw that out there right now. Now, the first thing I want to say before anything is the fact that your person that you're dealing with right now, Aries, they're very much a deep thinker. They're very much uh, spiritual, like they're on, a, they're on a very spiritual vibration. I do want to say that. Um, they're not necessarily attached to the materialistic world. They do have a lot, though, because they have the all gifted here. So obviously there is a level of abundance that this person has. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but that's given because they put their faith in the universe. They put they put their faith their faith in that spiritual aspect of things, and they understand a different realm of how things go. I also feel like too, um, you know, they're very quiet with their thoughts. You know, they're not necessarily expressing to you everything of how they feel. Hold on one second, Vincenzo. Can you turn that down? Yeah, that's fine, but you have to turn it down because I'm doing a recording, okay? Oh, I, I didn't know. I didn't look at like a... Okay. Yeah, okay, thanks. Sorry, guys. Um, so, with that being said, this person is, can be unusual at times. They have a level of introspection. They're very intuitive, very psychic. They have that psychic ability. They also um, are very wise. Um, they, at times, can be very melancholy, and sometimes they leave too much to chance, and they can be hard to reach at times. You know, so that's something to kind of like keep in mind. But they're interesting. They're kooky. Like they're bed partners. They're 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 great in bed. You know, they're somebody that you can sit there and watch a movie with and chill. They reach a level of intimacy beyond people's imaginations. And I feel like for this person, they have high hopes of what something can be, which means at times they can be let down in you know certain situations. I do feel like you and this person in the past, I feel like you've retraced your steps with them and really tried to figure out exactly where this situation is going, um, where you want it to go. And I think that you're releasing those things that are holding you back from being with this person. That's what I'm getting strongly, especially with a ton of um, wands at the bottom and the eight of cups at the top. Now, all gifted. You know, this person is ready to give themselves to you completely. Like, in this person's mind, like, they've already done that. They've already put the faith out. They've already put that into the universe that they want to be with you. Even if they're not necessarily vocalizing this to you, Aries, that is something that's coming across very strongly. And this person does have a lot to offer that can change your life in, in an amazing way. What's being offered here? Okay, King of Pentacles, like I said. So we have the King of Pentacles, which is Taurus or Leo, um, with the Queen of Pentacles side by side. So obviously, you and this person make a great match, especially in the financial sense. So this person either makes a lot of money or has the potential of making money. They're very consistent. They're very, uh, they take risks, okay? They achieve. They're highly intellectual. They're very dominant. They're independent. Um, they're ambitious, right? And there is something here to their level of practicality when it does come with money. They may be bossy at times, right? However, this is a person that may own their own business. This may be um, a CEO. This may be somebody that really is in the limelight. They dress nice. They smell good. You know, this person is very much buttoned up and what the world sees is a very polished version of themselves. And that's why I feel like they're either a CEO, uh, a marketing director, they're in the, you know, they have the potential of being in the public eye, but they're willing to give something to you. Now, I do want to say this. I do think that this person, because um, we do have the Seven of Swords, so that's very much Moon and Aquarius. I think that this person at times there may be something that's hidden from you or, you know, something that they're not necessarily expressing. There's something uh, pertaining to their thought process or how they want to carry something out. What's the energy of the Seven of Swords? Okay, the Five of Wands. And this can simply be, you know, fighting for you, right? That's Mars and Leo. 
that's fighting for, you know, what they feel like is theirs, what they feel like is naturally, you know, theirs. However, it's almost like they're worried about showing you um, that aspect of themselves because there is a level of aggression or imbalance that comes with it, especially with that seven. It's like uncertainty. Maybe like they're not completely sure about where this relationship is going and they're trying to have faith that things are going to go in that right direction. And that can be something that they go back and forth with themselves. Okay, six of wands. Do you see there's a lot of um, Aquarius energy, Mercury in Aquarius. It's having a conversation like this person is highly intelligent highly intelligent and how they think is out of the box they're not predictable like every time you think you have them pinned down you don't and they surprise you every single time i feel like this person wants to leave behind whatever bullshit you guys were fighting about prior and have a level of forward movement here they don't want to be stuck in a position where they're guilty or they feel constantly rejected they just want to have forward movement with you and this can be somebody that you've met from a distance this can be somebody you know definitely that you've met from afar um i also feel like too you know this person is very unique and intelligent and they bring a lot of excitement to your life and you know you may have developed a relationship with them in a friendly sense prior to a romantic one and it may be because you guys are from you know a different culture that can definitely be it um, or, you know, also too, I feel like this person has come into your life to provide you a level of security. You know what I mean? They're helping you value yourself. They're helping you, you know, show yourself what you have to offer. And they're communicating that in a way that makes you feel really good. Um, okay. Can you give me one card here for woo, justice, possibly a Libra, a moon, uh, rising or um, Venus or even Sun, right? You know, this person is very uh, confident. They're very balanced. They're very harmonious. Um, and I think, you know, when you meet them, actually, kind of funny, you may have were even in a relationship with somebody else, which is why you had to start off with this person as friends first. And I don't think that you were really processing the fact that this person was going to be something much, much more. I don't think you knew that at that time. But this person is very loving and affectionate towards you. And they can be clingy at times. And, you know, maybe how they handle things is somewhat passive and that bothers you, passive aggressive. Like maybe, you know, they hit you with a block every now and then, right? Or maybe they get frustrated with you because, you know, for them, things need to be completely balanced, right? And there's something here with that Taurus Libra energy, right? Very much a nurturing Venus type of love. Like this person, you know, like you... I feel like when you and this person meet or when you and this person are together, it's like there's this weird memory that you've been together forever. It feels very natural for you, which is why it's challenging. You know, if you've tried to let go of this person, it's like, fuck, I keep, I can't. I want to, but I can't. All right. How you feel about them as a queen of pentacles. Obviously, you feel like this person is very established. This person has the ability to do the right thing. This person has a level of structure in their life that is providing them a level of mental, uh, physical, and emotional security, right? Think about the uh, Queen of Cups. This is somebody that's very nurturing, right? Uh, or Cancer, because the Queen of Pentacles is Capricorn and it's also Cancer. This person may be able to play both roles, right? They may be able to play that father and that mother role because they instill discipline and order, but in a very nurturing way that provides a level of security, okay? And I feel like this person is somebody who's constantly giving. More information about how Aries feels about their person of interest. Eight of Pentacles. I think that you know that they work their ass off. I think that you know that they're willing right now to do whatever it takes to make it work. They're learning from their actions. They're learning from when things were stuck between you guys. It's like, what, what do we do to make it work? What do we do to give a level of progression here, right? Because the seven is going to the eight, that's Virgo. But it's also about, you know, 
learning from one another and really honing in on your craft. And I feel like for you, this person is the missing piece to your puzzle. You know, you can have everything, um, Aries, but if you don't have that person that fits your life perfectly and that gives you that level of stability, you don't have anything, right? And I feel like this person may be somebody from the past that's coming back around. Or this is a relationship that was a past life relationship that wasn't, you know, completely completed at that time. Maybe something happened or steps weren't taken to um, forward it. So now this is why it's coming up again. I also feel like this is definitely a rebirth for you and your partner. Because you know what? There is a level of completion that is needed. And I'm saying that because you have the world card here. And that's uh, Capricorn, Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, um, Capricorn, Taurus, Scorpio also. And with Judgment, Judgment is also is also that as well with the two of wands and that's mars and aries that's you know you wanting to move forward with this person because you're very drawn to them you're sexually attracted to them but you know that something has to change in the process how does aries uh what is, okay ace of pentacles i feel like they give you support but what is aries like about this person romantically okay king of wands I think that you're very passionate about this person. This is Leo, but I think that you're very passionate about them. I think you're passionate about what they have to offer. I think that you're sexually attracted to them. I think when you and them are together, it's like, you know, flesh meeting flesh, but it's something very hot and bothered. Like, I don't know. I feel like when you guys get together, it's definitely some freak nasty shit. I'm going to be honest. It's something that is um, triggering all of your senses. And it's almost very animalistic or a very raw energy, right? It's, it's, it's a level of raw emotions. It's letting go of yourself and it's a beginning of unity, right? There's something very much here with you and this person. And it's funny because the Queen of Wands wanted to pop out and it's like, no matter, and that's Aries right there. And it's like, this person is your perfect fit. Your person gives you everything, you know, that you definitely need. And as I said, that the Ten of Pentacles. They have the ability, and I think for you, you see them as somebody stable enough where you can marry them and have a life with them. And I feel like you're moving towards that because you have the Ace of Cups with the Chariot, okay? Cancer, that's moving towards something. That's moving in the direction of, you know, victory, that's also physical movement. If you're at a distance, which you may be, that's probably why the Six of Swords is here, having a conversation with, when am I going to see you? When are we going to live together? What are we doing here, right? Now, what do you not like about this person? Let me ask. What does Aries not like about their person of interest? What does Aries not like about their person of interest romantically? One more time. What is Aries not like about their person's interest romantically? Okay, Nine of Swords. I think that this person can be cold at times. That's Gemini. That's Mars and Gemini. I think that this person gets in their head and they're in a weird state if there's no, if there is a lack of communication. And I think that their thoughts and their ideas manifest or in their head they start thinking all these different things. And I think that this person has the ability to cut you off and shut you out completely. And I think that that scares you. It's like you're worried that, you know, you don't know where you stand with them. This is seven of wands or seven of swords. I'm sorry. You know, the fact that this person has the ability of being this king of wands, this passionate, loving, caring partner, but then also turning around and cutting your ass out, you know, turning their back on you saying, hey, yeah, this is the beginning, but it's not enough. Like, I need something more than that. And I feel like you're worried that you don't have the ability to give that to them. Or you're also worried that what else is going on? What are they hiding? What are they not expressing to me? You know, and it may be about a living situation. It may be, you know, about uh, children. It may be about a multitude of things. But for whatever reason, I feel like this person, because they're coming in with that seven of swords, it's like you don't know exactly what they're thinking. And the fact that they have that level of unpredictability makes you a little bit nervous. Now we have um, the Seven of Wands. 
So this is the current situation. Obviously, there's something that's being, you know, something that you feel like you need to fight for, right? And um, the Seven of Wands, that's Mars and Leo. And for those of you that have Mars and Leo, like the one thing about it is you don't have a problem standing up for what's right and doing the thing that most people may think is crazy, right? But it's also about, you know, forcing that level of change and not caring what other people think. I also feel like it's like not wanting to be embarrassed. Like if, you know, you go from the six of wands of being praised and then all of a sudden into, you know, the seven of wands having to fight for something, fight for something that you want and fight for something that you want to have a level of success with. What What's what's causing the seven of wands with Aries and a person of interest? Causing the seven of wands with Aries and a person of interest? The four of cups. Okay, uh, that's moon and cancer, cancer moon. That's, again, you see, there's a lot of emotions that are involved here. And it can be because things are just weird, right? It can be because you and this person are not necessarily communicating. It can be because somebody feels rejected or indifference or, you know, somebody is scared of the feelings that they have and they're fighting those feelings. That's definitely what I think. Why are they fighting the feelings? Because, hello, hi lovers, how you doing, Gemini? Um, because they're in love with you. And then you have, you know, the Nine of Pentacles. Here's uh, Venus and Virgo. It's like, but does this make sense? Like, you or your partner may be fighting. Is this something that logically makes sense? You know, it's, it, it's really looking at something from a very detached and scientific way and not trying to involve your emotions in it. The problem is... This is a highly emotional situation, and it's one that you are trying to leave your emotions aside and walk forward to, but you can't because here's the thing. You're highly attached. How does Aries feel about the current situation? The Ten of Cups. You feel like you're in a dream state. You feel like, holy shit, that's Mars and Pisces. Wow, this is really happening. This has the potential of being so much, you know, so much more than what it is. There is a big conclusion coming and a transformation that is moving on. Um, how does Aries, person of interest or partner, feel about the current situation? Okay, the lovers. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like you both are trying to fight the fact that you fucking love each other. Like, I'm sorry. Like, at what point in time, and I love you guys, but here's my rant. At what point in time... Do you guys just say, hey, we love each other. Why the fuck are we making this so difficult? Why are we causing, you know, this hangman where we're both hung up on each other because, you know, we're worried about what the other one is thinking? Why, why, are, why are you two just not embracing it? Why are you guys just not accepting or acknowledging, vocalizing, I love you? I don't know what else there is to say. You both love each other. You know what I'm saying? It's like... But then you're both fighting that. You both are sitting here trying to be hella stubborn and pretend like it isn't what it is. Like, oh, I have to focus on myself, nine of pentacles. Well, bullshit, because here you go. Here's the lovers. You want to focus on yourself. And here's what's crazy is you or and your partner obtain more wealth together than you do separately. Because guess what? Emperor always is with his empress. Hello, can I come in? Okay. They're always a pair. And guess what? They succeed when they are together. And the emperor and the empress, when they consummate their marriage, they become the lovers. Hello, can I get an amen in this bitch? I mean, Jesus Christ. Like, clearly there's something here. And with you guys being that dominant energy, right? That Aries, that trailblazer, that independent image, that strong, make a decision, do what's right. But then you also have to be balanced out by that feminine aspect of it. That loving, emotional side, you can't just be all work and no play, all work and no love. It just doesn't work out like that. You need that in your life in order to create a harmonious balance. Okay, rant over. I love you guys. And it's just like, fuck, man. Like, can somebody get their head out of their ass at some point and just openly, like, put themselves out there and say, like, yo, I fucking love you and have that returned? Um, and it may be on your partner's side. Maybe your partner is scared to say it. Maybe your partner is worried at your response because that's making them feel vulnerable. All right. 
Um, what is the block or external influence here? We have the hangman. So obviously, you know, there's something that has to be sacrificed or something that's suspended. What's being, what needs to be sacrificed for Aries and their person of interest? Okay. The strength card. And I'm going to tell you this, this is Leo. I don't think it's a Leo that needs to be sacrificed. I don't think it's a Leo. That's a third party situation. I think what needs to be sacrificed is an ego. I feel like ego plays a big role, especially if you're dealing with somebody who is very much on their shit, similar to you. That means that person has enough pride, enough ego to push them forward, right? Um, why are you showing the strength card? Look, as I said that shit, ego. Hello, the sun is here. That is I am. That's releasing that I am and hitting it with a we, right? An us. Um, what happens if this is sacrificed, if the ego is sacrificed, okay, it's the eight of cups. You're leaving behind something that wasn't working for you and you're, you're, if something was not working or a mistake, right, you're going back and you're retracing your steps. Remember, this eight of cups doesn't go to the seven where there's a level of uncertainty. That eight of cups then goes to the nine of cups. There is a transition or there is something that comes from this. What's coming from the Eight of Cups? Holy shit. Holy shit, Batman. Hold my beer because this is legit. Change, okay? The Wheel of Fortune. Changing in a positive fashion. A good luck, good karma, right? These are all things that are happening because you're changing the routine. You're changing something that, you know, you do consistently. Think about Leo. Leo is a fixed sign. Okay, they will do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, right? Because that's what fixed signs do. But the moment that a Leo does something different, like let's say a Leo is always giving, right? The moment that they stop giving, it makes everybody go, what the fuck just happened? You know what I mean? It's breaking a pattern. It's breaking a cycle. And it's breaking something that's ultimately forcing a level of change. How does uh, Aries feel about this? Well, that hella shit just popped out. Hold on, that's too many. How does Aries uh, feel about this? Five of Swords reversed. Okay, you see there was a Five of Swords over here somewhere, and now it's reversed. It's like you're no longer in a place where somebody is doing something wrong, what's best suiting them, right? You're now thinking about where does this relationship go? How does it expand together? You're in deep thought about where you go from here with this person. Especially that five of swords reversed. I really do like that. And I do think it's forcing you to think about the other aspect of it. Queen of swords. Okay. That's uh, Libra or it's also cancer, but cancer moon, cancer rising, cancer Venus. You know, it's forcing you to think about, okay, from a logical aspect, how do I, how do I change something so that it creates a level of harmony, but it's harmony growing together. Like Libra is the spouse, right? Libra is the seventh house, which is your spouse. Okay. It's really looking at this person and knowing that they're your equal, the sun and being happy with them. And that's these two that are infused together. Like this card is all about fusion. How, how does Aries partner feel about uh, the Wheel of Fortune, about things changing, about the ego going away? The Wheel of Fortune. They feel like, you know, things are changing. They feel like that's what's needed in order to have a level of progression, right? And guess what? Remember how I told you that Eight of Cups? Guess where the hell it just went? To the Nine of Cups. Hi, how you doing? Okay. I just, I feel very strongly that it's taking something that maybe didn't make sense at first and it's showing you that, you know, there is a level of satisfaction that comes in a very much a well-being. Like you feel good about this person. This, per this person replenishes whatever emotions that you've lost in the past and it makes you happy. It's Jupiter and Pisces. Where are you expanding? You're no longer in the Four of Swords, Right. How do I go about this in a way that makes everyone happy? Now it's Jupiter and Pisces, right? And Jupiter and Pisces, and I think I actually have a Jupiter and Pisces. Um, it's about having an optimistic outlook on the fact that anything is possible, on the fact that you are lucky, 
believing you are lucky, having that aspect. The moment that people really downplay, you know, like for me personally, I'm never stressed about money. That's the one thing I will never stress about because those that stress about money are the ones that don't have them. Those that feel that they're lucky, they are lucky because they're saying that into the universe. They're preaching that. They're believing it, right? And I feel like with the Jupiter in Pisces, it's really saying, I believe that there is a potential of growth here that's beautiful. So, you know, I think that that's why there is this open mind here. Now, for your outcome, it's the King of Cups. If I can ever pick this goddamn card up. Okay, and that's beautiful to me. The King of Cups is somebody that's making a very solid offer. This is somebody who's coming to you in a very emotionally stable way, right? This isn't a Princess of Cups. For me, every time I see the Princess of Cups, I'm like, or that's like the Page of Cups, right? I'm like, get that shit out of here. I don't want to look at it. You know what I mean? Because that's an emotionally immature person that's coming to me offering me what? A box of chocolates? Like, no, take that shit back. You come offer me something that's emotionally stable, okay, that's matured, that's formed, and that has the ability to express it. And I feel like something's definitely coming here, especially with this King of Cups. So, I love you guys. You are amazing. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Peace.